I can't do this. I don't know how. I don't know where to start. But God, if this is what you want, then I want this to be my desire as well. And God made it my desire. It's not nothing I wanted to per se uh, to begin with, but I realized it was God's will in my life. And I wanted God's will uh, to be my will. Uh, but at the same time, church, do you think I could have ever been in preaching today in the authority and in the power of God and in the authority and in the power of, of the Holy Spirit if I would have never come at a point in my life uh, to say okay God you better have this because if you don't uh, brother we're both in trouble I stood up and said okay God I don't know what I'm doing I don't know where to begin but if you say you're going to go with me I'll go God uh, by your grace but you have to give me the thing to say I don't have the first clue and brother God has never left me sin I've, I've, I've laid down on the job a time or two I've got all confused and allowed a time or two the devil uh, to come in and try to twist and tear everything up attempted to destroy uh, the ministry that God called me into many preachers are stuck oh I want you to pray for my ministry it's God's ministry. It ain't my ministry. It ain't God's. I mean, it ain't my church. It's God's church. It's God's everything. I don't own anything in this world. Uh, people say I'm so proud of myself. I just bought my first house. I can say I own something. Uh, let me be the first one uh, to tell you the bad news. Wait till the first time something breaks down and goes wrong. There's nobody to call except your yourself. Uh, when you want to add something, then you have to call everybody and their brother. Then you have to pay them uh, their fines and their fees before you can do anything uh, to your so-called house. It ain't your church. Nothing in this world is mine. And I, I know beyond doubt. So I don't worry about it. My, my, my uh, uh, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing by. Uh, but I'll tell you one thing. My treasures are all laid up in far beyond that beautiful sky. Uh, far beyond the sky I see. Far beyond the space, outer space I can't see. Far beyond the Milky Way. And brother, above everything, there is called the third heaven. Uh, brother, that's where my place is. That's what I'm awaiting on. Many people want to go to heaven and they're ready to go. Oh, but do you want to go today? Absolutely not. Nobody seems to want to go uh, when it push come to shove. But I'll tell you something, church. We don't know the hour. We don't know the second that our life, that the Spirit of God is going to be taken out of our body. It came from Him, not the devil. So it will indeed go back to Him for judgment. Uh, the devil gave you nothing, especially life. Uh, so the devil can't take it. A uh, brother God. Every God is a above all things. God is overseeing all things. When death is allowed to come, that's because your time is up in this walkway of life. But do you trust God while you're in this walkway of life? Two people out of 12 trust, showed their trust in God. I was going to read at 26, they came to Moses and to Aaron, uh, Numbers 23, and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh, and brought back unto them, uh, brought back word unto them, and unto all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land, whether thou sendest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people are be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled. Uh, verse 28, very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak uh, there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites, uh, Canaanites rather dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, uh, 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 the other ten, they've got everybody in an uproar. But here comes Caleb. Hey, 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 what? Wait a minute, they're not telling you the truth. Caleb says, uh, 
stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are able to overcome it. But you can continue to read the men, they were scared. What is it? What happens in this walkway of life that terrifies you? I'll tell you one thing that has taken place in my life that terrified me and caused me to literally tremble even though I still knew God Almighty as my Savior. And that was when my son was laying in the hospital and he wouldn't come out of this uh, this seizure activity. Everything was all over. Nothing in the world I could do except pray. I couldn't speak to him because he couldn't talk. I couldn't do anything to help him. And my dad came down and, 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 and reassured me and reminded me that brother, you're, he's in the hand of an almighty God. You are a child of God. That's where my peace came in. Thank you Lord for sending a messenger to remind me that I don't have these things to worry about. I don't have to fear these things. The good Lord gave me that boy. If he's ready to take him, the good Lord give him, the good Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'll be able to go and see him again. But he's with us today. Thank God. And that was that's years about, I don't know, 15 years ago, maybe something like that. The prayers of the righteous, all we have to do is remember what Moses did. When God, the, you imagine the whole congregation there before the Red Sea party. Everybody's in an uproar. They're coming at us. What are we going to do, Moses? The God's not going to do anything. Everybody's in an uproar. Everybody, nobody knows what to do, what to say, what to turn to. But And they've lost. They have no faith. It's becoming clear now. They have no trust. It's becoming evident now. Many people say, 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 but when push comes to shove, they're so far from the truth of what they say. Oh God, and, and, and that's why uh, I want no one to come to me that does not attend the house of God and say to me, I'll die for the Lord. I'll go to jail for the Word of God if that's what I have to do. You're a bald-faced liar and you're lying to yourself when you won't even come to the house of God for His Word. I'll tell you that right now. Somebody's lying. Somebody's lying. But a lot of people are in that position. They'll do anything to let them talk. But when push comes to but when it comes to doing, mm -mm, oh no, change their mind. Change their mind. I don't know how many people are just like the Israelites have uh, get out away from uh, er, uh, everybody that they know, get away from church, and brother, uh, uh, buddy, here comes the whole truth now. Lord have mercy, whole different lifestyle altogether. Well, I'm that way in church. I make mistakes. God forgives me. I do make mistakes. God will indeed forgive me. But here's there's a loophole in that one. I am not in any circumstances allowed by God Himself to go out and do something. God bring it to my attention. I repent of it. God will forgive me. That's good. But if I go out and do this again and again, I am doing exactly what Jesus Christ told this woman to not do again. The adulteress. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Are you complaining and crying the blues when things are not going your way? I don't understand it, Brother Millard. I don't either. I don't, it's not my job to have to understand it. It's my job to trust in the Word of God, to trust in the hand of God, to trust in the voice that comes from God. You go, I will go with you and be assured of this. You be of good courage. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. I will go with you all of the way. When you go through the fire, a brother, you shall not be burned. The book of Isaiah Isaiah 43, a third chapter. If I mistake not, when you go through the flood, they will not overcome you. Oh, brother, I'm either going to believe that or I'm going to leave it or leave it alone and do what I want when things are going good. Oh, brother, it's, it's a whole lot easier, I will admit, of to get up and be able to preach. Oh, 
so freely the word of God. But when the devil's on a rampage, which is an everyday thing, and brother and everybody and their brother it seems, wants to forsake the Lord's house, which is again every day it seems. How come the preacher can be there even when nobody else is? Because like I said over and over again, it don't matter how the preacher man feels. A brother God gives him the strength just like he does everybody else, but that will not come into the house of God. But I thank God to know there's still people that in today's world will are, are still obedient unto the Lord our God. Why is it the small churches I wonder seem like they're completely folding up, uh, folding up uh, closing the doors and the mammoth places that don't even preach uh, the word of God. Brother, they've got everything made. Just hold on, brother. Uh, just hold on, sister in the Lord. They may have everything in this life. Oh, but in the life to come, it's our turn. A uh, brother and nobody I can take away the promised land that God ultimately told you and I that our names are written in. If our names are written down in uh, the Lamb's book of life, a uh, brother, uh, uh, that new heaven uh, that descended out of heaven, of uh, 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 the new heaven and the new earth, John seen coming down. There is their promised land right there. No man is going to take it. No man's going to get yours. Nobody's going to come over and tell me I can't have mine. I don't have to worry about no fines. I don't have to pay anybody anything. Don't have to call nobody up. Won't have to pray on nobody's behalf. All of that, it will be forgotten to be remembered no more. No tears in heaven because God, if that's what it takes, he'll see to it by wiping our eyes himself. We won't have to worry about it, church. But while we in this life. The trust issue and the faith issue guarantee you this beyond doubt. Every single day of your life, if not every day almost, it will come to you. Where is your trust at? Are you rooted in God's Word? Are you grounded in the blood of Jesus Christ? Have you been washed and set aside? Have you been made whole? If the Son of Man sets you free, you shall be free in Indeed, free of everything uh, that the world can throw on you. Uh, the politicians, you know it uh, just as well as I do, and everybody else in the world in power. They are real heavy. Uh, they are real, uh, real fast, and do it so easily uh, to lay down the law that they themselves uh, uh, make themselves above every law they uh, 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 bring out to you and I, and they put burdens upon you and I. We have to pay for everything uh, that goes on in this world. A uh, brother is taxes this and taxes that. I know, church, well, everybody will know there's no uh, getting out of it. Oh, but I don't worry about all of that. If I have it to pay, uh, by God's grace, I'll pay it. If I don't have it to pay, uh, God will either give it to me or to take care of it, or I'm afraid it'll get turned off. There's no thing I'm going to worry about because it's out of my control. There was once upon a time it was so much easier in this old walkway of life. A money brother came and we spend it and, and, and uh, uh, throw, uh, we didn't throw it away but after the bills were all paid we still had uh, more to uh, do this with and to get the food with and to do these things. Oh but today it's everything we can do just to see that the bills are paid. But don't you think mercy is going to be given unto you in this old world. There ain't no mercy. Everything is according uh, to the plans of certain people uh, that's coming on down the line. And brother, let me be the, uh, assure you of this. Every There's nobody in this old walkway of life and no kind of power that has your best interest at hand. I don't care what their name is. Oh, but God Almighty, He and He alone praise God as your best interest at hand and he has my best interest at hand to be to uh, give you and I an expected end what kind of end do you expect if you're going to serve God I expect one without sin I expect one with streets of gold walls of jasper water as clear as crystal 
I expect one where there's no want for anything. God is going to give me that expected end. He's going, my, my faith that I have in God will end in sight. I will see the God that I worship. I will be with the one that I worship. Lord, if you don't come soon, how many people has been there? I don't know how much more I can take. I've been there. I don't know, Lord, how much more your people can take because your people seem to be falling away for the most part. Your people, just, just like uh, 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 from the uh, beginning to the end of the Bible, we are continue to be stiff-necked. We continue to be hard-hearted. We continue to be hard-headed. We continue to be stubborn. We continue to, uh, when the preacher goes, when the people you sin go, that we still do not listen. You know this. And you continue to send us because of his long suffering. Because it's not his will that any should perish. And nobody will ever stand before God and say, I did not hear. If you hear the word of God one time, and that's your only time, God knows how many times you're going to hear it. But some people only hear the word of God, the preaching of God, the truth of the gospel. They only hear it one time. And then they're going to pass from that world. But at that same time, that is the one time that God will indeed be knocking on their heart's door. Because God will draw them into uh, uh, His bosom if they will let Him. God will knock upon their door and say, Come unto me, you know you need to. I am the answer to everything. I will give you rest when you can't find any. He and He alone is the answer. But they refuse it. Maybe next time, next time doesn't come. But they won't stand before God and say, I didn't hear. I didn't know. Oh, God will be able to say to everyone, Oh man, thou art inexcusable. Depart from me, I never knew you. No if, no ands, no buts. Two people out of twelve took God at his word. Remember what God said. Showed their faith to be in God. Showed their trust to be in God. The other people, their trust was in what their eyes saw. Is your trust in what your eyes see? Is your trust in what uh, your ears hear? Well, he said, she said, put that slop away from you. That ain't no good. That's been a table barrel, bearer, the uh, barrier, a uh, bearer. Uh, that's not going to do anything but stir up everything. Contention, strife, malice, hatred. Put all that nonsense away from you. I don't care what you heard. Have you heard the good news of Jesus Christ? That's more like it. We need to get into that a whole lot more. Where's your trust at today? Getting ready to wrap it up, coming to a close. Is it in the one that Moses trusts in? Moses, before thousands upon thousands, had to remind everybody, stand still and see the salvation of God. Without faith, nothing will get done. Moses had faith no matter who did not. Moses had trust no matter who did not. He said, stand still. He put that rod out there like God says. He said, Lord, uh, uh, Moses, touch the sea with your rod. <laughs> walked back. No mud, no mare, no nastiness. Dry, they walked across on dry land. Even though they murmured, cried, was scared to death. How many uh, positions you've been in in life where you've been scared to death? Or have you ever been found yourself in that position? I've been there more than once thought I was gone. It's all over. I've, apparently this is how it's going to end. I'm still here. I'm still here. It'll end when God says, okay, son, I'm done. Come on home. That's when it'll end, unless I get stupid and end my life faster. A lot of people think, well, you can't commit suicide and end your life faster, because if you do that, it was your turn to go. Not so. Not so. And you can extend your life as well. Hezekiah did. Hezekiah did. King Hezekiah, 15 years, I believe. 15. Now, <clears throat> where is your faith? Where is your trust when push comes to shove? Do you really trust in the Word of God? Do you take it literally for what it really is? If God says something, do you, can you... Uh, are you, uh, can you assure yourself, can you honestly say to yourself that you believe the Word of God? Well, I believe most of it. Well, you don't believe the Word of God then. Because we cannot accept and disaccept 
some, uh, uh, some of the words of God. Everything in the Holy Bible is the word of God. That came to uh, holy men of God as the Holy Spirit from God entered into these men and told them what to write. That's what they wrote. The language of the Bible has been distributed around the world. It had to be recopied into different languages, but that is exactly why things, uh, the day of Pentecost took place because there were people there and three cloven tongues came over all of the, uh, 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 the prophets, uh, disciples, and they spoke. It didn't say that they spoke something they didn't know what they were saying. People from all around the world were gathered together right there that day. And God knew that they, when, they got, when, when they got through, they was going to take it back into their land all over the world, and they was going to share it. So therefore, those three tongues appeared, and uh, when the disciples spoke, when Peter spoke, everybody understood in their own language. Amen. Peter had no knowledge of all of these different <laughs> languages. Which is, by the way, speaking in tongues is simply speaking in different languages. That's all it is. That's why if you have no interpreter, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Bible says, let them keep silent. Because there's nothing but confusion going on. But how many people today want to go off into their own uh, speaking habits and then pretend to be filled with the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost is not about confusion. That's all that is, confusion. That's all it is. <laughs> God doesn't even understand that language. You know why? Because it's not a language. It's a bunch of sounds. It's a bunch of sounds. Making self look good. Lifting self up. Don't get into that stuff, church. If, if, if something that you do does not lift up God, let it go. Let it go. Pastors. I don't know how many places. Lift up the pastors, got them on pedestals. There's only one thing that pastor can do that's been set up on a pedestal by the congregation. All they can do is fall off. That's all they can do is fall. Put God up on that pedestal. You trust the Lord your God with all of your heart, mind, strength, and soul. No matter what comes your way, no matter what you're allowed to hear, no matter what the devil puts before you that uh, causes your eyes to see, you trust the Lord your God as we stand. Thank <laughs> you.